look at this. It's no makeup mama. Baby kitchen is here in full force still. There's the keyboard. The kids have been out here playing with the keyboard, but what are we doing in this video? Well, obviously, we're not ripping the baby kitchen out, but that's coming up. Oh, yes, it is. In this video today, friends, we are going to decorate for Christmas, and we are gonna make a whole bunch of Christmas cookies, so let's go, yay. And here's, here's Amazon. Here's the Merry Amazon Christmas that's arriving at our door every day. And here are so many things that we got to add to our decorating stash for Christmas 2022. that this jingle all the way pillow is so well packaged here so we just rip off the plastic I don't want to rip off the tassel though got it nice okay mama Christmas pillows okay and I did just cut off my big lots tag from my jingle all the way pillow but this is the the mama chair with Christmas pillows and then there we go we got reindeer crossing and over here we have our Fa la 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 la. I think this one and that nice big one were at Costco for $8.99. Okay, and then these pillows, I am going to just cut some of these big tags. It says, under penalty of law, this tag may not be, re be removed except by the consumer. So I am the consumer and I am removing these tags. These were from Big Lots. And then we have our gingerbread house, and we just removed the little light sample button. So now we're gonna put in batteries and get it going for real. Here we go. Now it'll be all nice and lit up for us. Woo, there it goes already, friends. Okay, so these tags are cut off, so I'm gonna go get these on my blue couch. Here's our other, uh, Jamrell, where do you hide your Christmas presents? Well, right now they're hidden in plain sight in Amazon boxes, but I am going to at least switch the pillows out on this couch. And um, some folks have asked why I bought all these Christmas decorations and if I have too many, it's a personal preference thing, but I do wanna say, this chicken pillow with the scarf is the only seasonal pillow that I owned. So at 43 years old, middle-aged woman, middle-aged mama, I bought myself, what was it? Seven holiday pillows. So I guess I'm saying, go me, this chicken now has a few more friends. But she's doing well. I got her probably two years ago at Tractor Supply, so yay. So there we go, old blue couch has some fresh Christmas pillows. Yay, blue couch. And festive, we have our Paw Patrol hat. Okay, and we have some uh, small handful of Happy Thanksgiving napkins. So for now, look at me, I am just going to put them in here. Nothing else is in here yet, yay. And then right here, still walking into the current, it is the laundry room, the green door. Well, it is, sweetie, you're right. I have the, the nice little Believe sign. Okay, and then I've been letting kiddos, they've been hanging up decorations on the cabinets here. I've got to remove some Dollar Tree tags. But uh, I thought this looked nice, and of course we've talked about how well it's just gonna, you know, have to be extra patient when we're opening up some cabinets, but cute decoration. Okay, we are gonna get our nice little winter cardinal going. You see that the fall sunflowers have been well loved. I think I got this at Dollar General. So that has been well loved, and now hello winter cardinal. We'll see you, it's now December, so we'll use you until March and then we'll switch it out for spring. And I will save this rug. I'll use this, you know, next year on the back porch or something. And this uh, wreath, I almost said leaf, got it Hobby Lobby, also that one. Amelia picked up that one. It lights up, but I'm gonna take off the little sample here. We press the button and see and put our batteries in it. 
Okay, so this wreath is a serious commitment. It looks like it's gonna take six batteries. Wowie zowie. And so kiddos are helping me. We're getting everything up here on the table. Some are clipping off the little tags from things. Okay, so let's see if we can Christmas ourself up. There we go. Goes along with the fall pumpkins. Okay, so we got some funky chickens. Now I was trying to order, you know, the light up chicken that we've all seen at Tractor Supply. I got on Amazon. I was trying to order some light up chickens. These are very small. And so, I don't know, I might have paid $39 for these light-up chickens. I guess I need to now check my Amazon order. I think these are fantastic light-up chickens. Probably not $39 chickens, but they are some. They're some barred rocks, aren't they? Yeah. They're cute. We love them. They're $39 good in our heart. So I just went through and washed all of our new Christmas cups. We didn't have any Christmas cups, so at least we now have a collection. And a viewing friend did remind me the other day, yes, last year at Costco, I did get winter cups. They were so precious. And I think I got two boxes of them because it was like, I don't know, a cat wearing glasses and like a deer in a plaid shirt, um, you know, looking, looking real dapper anyway so yeah we don't have any of those left those were well loved they were well worth what were they 14.99 or not go see if you can find the video for me tell me but anyway i bought them i sure did the last one was on travis's desk recently to fix and i'm like okay those those cups are gone so this is the 2022 children's holiday collection we can call it in the house of happy hearts okay i cannot guarantee that these cups are going to be here in 2023 but they are going to have a rocking christmas season in 2022 and hopefully they make it to march and the nativity has been sent out with loving care and the ginger light up gingerbread house yeah and then here we have our whole little whole little situation going on with our light up bird our little light up christmas nativity another little nativity this is where the star situation that we bought from big lots is i don't know that's going to stay there but then again it might okay and then over here we have we had to sweep where we had all this stuff stacked up it's like it's like we added more room uh here's our little little window situation still seeing the pumpkins outside because we are still feeding those to the animal but we animals but we got Merry Christmas and a little mama deer and baby deer and they took the little gold sash and put it around and Jesus is the reason for the season. Got our little bells when you open the door. We got those lights hanging there for now. I mean, I just bought some random lights and thought we could hang those around and again we have. And then we have this nice little gold runner and we have our snow globes. I have never owned musical snow globes i don't know like this in a decade or more or ever i don't know my snow globe history but now we have three in the house and we'll just see we'll see how's it gonna go snow globes your guess is as good as mine and then over here i have the little believe sign i have the beautiful snow wreath those two pictures travis is out now actually of course getting me a list from walmart i'm gonna have him hang those and then over there on the hood, I was thinking I have this giant red bow, and I'm gonna see if Travis can help me work that out. I know I've seen people who hang wreaths and things on their hood, so we'll see if that's possible. Uh, for now, I've got the little light up chickens here. I don't think they're really gonna work outside. Got the believe sign. We have the little snowman spoon. I have a joy sign there, and I did tell the kids because different ones will cook at different times. And a note to this mama. When we're cooking, we're gonna have to move the sign, okay? <laughs> then over here again, we got our cups. And then we're back to these little fun festive decorations. And I did put um, our big snowflake there. And we still have those, our flowers my mom had got over Thanksgiving. We have, oh, we have a little pony running through the floor, haha. -ha. Okay, so yeah, I think we're gonna leave her there for now. And then uh, kiddo just moved this one to the window. So that's fun. And we can even turn those on at night. And I did just tell them too, that our things that are light up with batteries, you know what, that wreath outside too, flip that over. We need to wait until five when it gets dark. Thankfully this time of year, I guess, you know, it's it's dark early, 4.30, it's getting dark. So 
Those are these battery powered things off for now, but then this evening it'll be fun to turn those on. And then right here we also had this nice little festive garland that we hung up too. And here, I know it's so exciting, we've already started to open boxes. So this is our packed up Christmas tree and some other outdoor wreaths. I have had those wreaths probably for five years or more. This is a forest house, and I will put those on other exterior doors. We do have some light up garlands we'll put around the fireplace. This is our tree, and then our little tree skirt and our ornaments packed up. So we're gonna get to work. So the tree is in the works. So I will say also going through my uh, the Jamarell Christmas video archives, I got this weird looking thing again, I think maybe six years ago, actually, maybe seven. OK, to go through my house history, we're at the forest house for four years. We've been here at this house for almost three years. I think I bought this our first Christmas at the forest house. Anyway, my whole point is it still works. Liam, would you plug it in for me? And so this goes at the top of the tree um, underneath the star. And then these white, yeah, we change the colors so we can show them. It just does all kinds of fun, different things. So it might just be the fact that we only use it, you know, for 30 days once a year, but five to seven years will give us ourselves the wiggle room. Uh, this set is, has just been working wonderful. And so it's called, I just want to show them the name, honey. It's called the Tree Dazzler. And you can have still lights. You can do a shimmer. And then you can go through and change the colors. And you can keep just, anyway, I believe this was less than $50. So five to seven years of Christmas lights, one purchase. It has stood the test of time. I don't know, it might even be like an as seen on TV product. <laughs> but anyway, we'll show you. We'll get it up under the star now. And it just looks nice on the tree. So there we go. They are all coming. Coming on just nicely. So now we're gonna get our ornaments on. So I always like looking at and showing all the baby first Christmas ornaments. So I'm, I'm missing two here. We got two, four, six, seven. Yeah, I think I'm missing my 2003 ornament and my 2021 ornament. So this is baby number one from 2020. Baby number two. MIA, but it might have got hung on the tree. We're, we're, we're looking for it. Uh, so then baby number three, 2006. Baby number four, 2009. Baby number five from 2011. Baby number six from 2013. And it looks just like her. Let's see here. Baby number seven from 2014. The way that, how did, how did that science work? Well, uh, baby number six was born at the beginning of 2013. And baby number seven was born right at the end. This is our birthday we're getting ready for. Was born at the end of 2014. And then baby number eight was born in 2017. But like I said, I got to find my 2021 and my 2003 baby ornaments. Okay, so we have a Christmas puzzle in the works here. This little puppy dog, that'll get done here soon. Got our nativity hanging out. We have a big stack of candy and the baby, the baby is over here trying to open the sprinkles. So that's fun, you reached up there. You Look. did, so so Travis went and updated, I must said uploaded, updated our sprinkle stash because we had no sprinkles in this house.
So we've been having our Oreo ball cookies, little assembly line. We've got our mix, which is our Oreo cookies. Travis got double stuffed ones. I feel like they're a little wetter, but it's all working out okay. The Oreos, and then it's just a pack of cream cheese, and then we roll them in the melted chocolate, and then we add in our sprinkles. So we've had all kinds of kids helping with this, and you can see we just got into the sprinkles that also have little mini marshmallows. But our first pan is already in the refrigerator. They just sit for about an hour. These can also be put in the freezer, and you can flash freeze them, and then just put them in your gallon Ziploc bags. And what I'm trying to do is, besides make some. We definitely have people here waiting to eat these. We also have several Christmas parties and events coming up and I'm hoping to get some in the freezer for those events too. So we've done several dozen already but again this is too wet. I need to add more cookies to it. They kind of they just don't set up as nice. They're gonna taste fantastic uh, but anyway I'm gonna add maybe 12 more cookies to this. So while we are doing puzzles and playing chess and making cookies, dinner is done. Thank you, freezer meals. And so just doing it. Stewart family buffet style. I have a Swedish meatball casserole and then the kielbasa and broccoli casserole. Some will want both. Some will want one. Whatever. It's there. And then also, yes, I know, me and my green beans in the slow cooker. But just listen here. I take two of the big cans of green beans. I dump them in there with some butter and some seasonings. I put them on low, and then by the time dinner is done, the green beans are done. They're not mushy, nothing's happened. They've just been heated through. So I didn't have to watch anything on top of the stove while we've been busy making cookies yet. So friends, on this evening, I obviously have a very loud and buzzing kitchen with the whole family out here. While we were making these yummy Oreo balls, we had kiddos doing puzzles, kids doing chest, lots of cookie grinding <laughs> and cream cheese slinging going on. Travis had Christmas music playing and it was just a fun, fun time. Now, did we really make enough Oreo balls to save for at least three upcoming Christmas parties? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. Uh, we made a bunch. I honestly didn't even end up counting, but I will show you. We made three nice full trays of them. I am going to keep the equivalent of one tray out, and then I am going to go ahead and freeze the other two trays. What I will probably do is th freeze those in three separate gallon bags and mark them for which party and then we already have a nice little custom cookie tray to go to each event. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Mega mama here. <laughs> we are getting up, getting moving with our day. I just came in to have a conversation with my whiteboard. Many more cookies I want to continue to work through. We did get the Oreo ones done last night. And of course I was thinking we would get a couple more done. But it got to be about 8 p.m. and we were all feeling Let's watch a Christmas movie. So that's what we did with the rest of our evening. Actually, that made it a late evening for us, but it was a lot of fun. So today, as we get ready and do our morning activities, we're gonna roll into our school day. Now, my plan per the whiteboard is that we'll get to the M&M cookies at some point this morning, and then by this afternoon, we'll be able to jump in and tackle several other recipes. We got our check mark for those Oreos last night. Today, it's already been decided by the powers that be, AKA the seven, almost eight year old, M&M cookies are next, and then we're gonna go through there. I'm also hoping to do some snickerdoodles, some peanut butter cup blossoms, the chocolate no-bake cookies. I believe I showed those in my mega Thanksgiving cooking video too. Those are just a classic recipe and they are Travis's absolute favorite. And then also I would like to do some thumbprint cookies. That's a big undertaking also. So we'll see if I get it to this video or if it's gonna be another video coming up. So 
So then also we just finished our table work. We're getting ready for read aloud time. And no one minds having our container of the Oreo balls ready to go. We are having some just after lunch and while we read. But these are kiddos help make them last night. They are lots of fun. And we do, we have more than this, but this is what we got out this afternoon. And also just giving a little update on those two freezer meal casseroles I made last night and the green beans. Got a little green beans left. We just finished the last of the Swedish meatball casserole. I got the last little plate heating up for lunch. Like I'm glad you like it, sweetie. So last night uh, we ate about three quarters of this one and about half of the kielbasa and broccoli bake. And that's also been heated up for some left lunch leftovers. But just saying, here we are. Not quite 24 hours later. This one's completely done. The other one will be done here shortly. And the green beans are still going down. Yay. Okay, so we're taking a little bit of afternoon read aloud break. I'm going to go ahead and get these M&M cookies prepped. We're going to, of course, we're going to bake some. But then I'm really interested in getting a bunch of them just prepared, round little cookie balls, get them in their bags and in the freezer for all these upcoming Christmas parties that we have. I did triple... I tripled my big batch make ahead and freeze cookie recipe for just standard M&M And in the recipe it also has regular chocolate chips or you can use butterscotch chips. We don't have any. So we are just doing M&Ms and I added a little bit extra to the bowl there. But anyway, let's get these M&M cookies going. Then more reading and then we're gonna do snickerdoodles. So stick with me, we're doing a lot. Alrighty, so here is all of our ingredients to do a triple bat. Okay, I've got my Jamarell's eyeball in school cup ready and we are gonna get going with these M&M cookies just because I have a lot of cookies that I wanna get in the freezer and this is my day to do it because tomorrow afternoon I am filming the Mega Mama lasagna extravaganza video that we've been wanting to do. I'm excited about that. What am I doing? Let's get my mixer. So just trying to get a few more things out here. Okay, so this is nine cups of flour, three teaspoons of baking soda, three teaspoons of salt. So it's baking soda. That's my salt. We just finished reading our George Mueller book today. Bye, Mom. Bye, sweetie. Quick run. We're saying bye. I told them. I said, everybody go on a quick. It's not, it's not too cold out. It's like sweatshirt hoodie weather. So I said, while Mama films this little part, mixing up these cookies, throw your sweatshirts on. We've been in here for hours being productive. Go for a run. I will have them help me though make these make these cookie balls here shortly. Okay, got that mixed up. Okay, so this is a total of three cups of butter, three cups of brown sugar, and then this is our, it looks similar, but it's the organic cane sugar. So anyway, I was telling you, we finished our George Mueller read aloud today. And then we're also working through reading Farmer Boy. We have someone making some tea over here, apparently. And the Vitamix has joined us. It has made a comeback. I was saying when you and I, when we were moving into this Mega Mama kitchen, I don't mind keeping things out that are getting daily used by the family. But the Vitamix had gone through I don't know, a couple weeks where we just weren't using it very much. We have times though, we're using it multiple times a day. So anyway, I put it away for a few weeks and just yesterday someone said, hey, where did the mixer go? And I was like, it's in the cabinet. If you're, just get it out, add it to the family. So anyway, as long as it's being used, it will live out and live out its days with us on the counter. And then this is my organic cane sugar, almost said salt, from um, Azure. This is just regular old great value brown sugar. We are keeping it real. Okay, so we got that. Now we're just going to cream these together. I'm just going to use my hand mixer. Let me know in the comments if you like where I put my big red bow. My mom hasn't been here for a few days, actually not much this week. So I, th I think she's gonna love that. <laughs> Whatever she gets, it's here tomorrow. 
but you let me know if you like the big red bow. I feel like it's festive. We just walk back to my little list here. Okay, add the eggs one egg at a time. Mix well after each addition. Add the vanilla. So, for how I originally have the recipe in the pack, it's two eggs. Since we've already jammed it up and massive mega it some more, we have six eggs we're gonna do. Also, I have my mama ain't doing that either shirt on today that I did. I left it, my, I had some toothpaste on it and then I have some broth from my lunch on here as well. Okay. I don't think I can run my mixer and crack an egg with my other hand, so sorry about that. These are also school bought eggs. Hopefully you can hear me over there. We did get two eggs though. I think it was yesterday or the day before, which is a nice little treat this time of year because we're not getting eggs every day. And I just let my ladies have a, I let the uh, hens have a little break this time of year. I had mentioned a frozen egg the other day and then folks were worried about my chicken and the frozen egg was from the barnyard that I like to let the chickens out to, to free range in, it's it's half an acre or so, or I don't, I don't know, I have a hard time looking at land, but it is a huge barnyard. And so every day I like the chickens to come from their coops and from their fenced and roofed run-ins into this bigger barnyard area so they can, we'll say it's a mini free range, right? Like they don't free range, there's the Christmas bells when they go out the door. Uh, they don't get to free range the whole seven acres, but they got a big chunk. All that to say, when you have your chickens out, you know, sometimes you'll find a little bonus, like Easter egg hunt. So the kids had found another egg a few days ago and it was frozen. And I had mentioned the frozen egg in a little TikTok video that I did. I think that also ended up over on Facebook. It's just me scrambling eggs. Um, and I was using, actually that video was when, I have to go through my video history, that was when I, I had several dozen of the farm fresh eggs and I was making scrambled eggs and I had mentioned that there was one or two that was frozen. Anyway, that's where those had come from, from outside the chicken coop and they were found. put the bells on the front door. Yeah, honey. Yeah, are, now are you okay like that? I think you need a sweatshirt. Yeah, I'm okay. You're okay? You're running? You can handle it? Yeah. Run fast. Run like the wind, bullseye. <laughs> well, it's not freezing weather here today. That's it with Virginia and December, you know. We have warm days and then we have chilly days. Sometimes it's freezing in the morning. I do, I have a fly by my head, get away fly. Sometimes it's freezing in the morning and then, you know, in the 50s in the afternoon. beans and I ordered bottles and I think we have to take a field trip to a liquor store haha -ha. but coming up I want to do a bunch of homemade vanilla I've never made homemade vanilla before and I have another friend who made it on her little farm and it was just so beautiful and I thought I can do that we can do that right so I, I ordered the vanilla beans and the bottles for it earlier this fall so we will definitely do that in an upcoming video. Okay. Okay. Really, we should do this in opposite bowls, but I've got my flour in this other one.
kids are in here right now, so. We can get these arms off here. Okay, now we're gonna fold in our M&Ms. And I did eyeball in it. Eyeball in school. I did throw some extra M&Ms in our bowl here. Because we don't have the chocolate chips, so. Hold on a minute, hold on. Just hold it once. I really want to put my hands in this and mix it. These are truly M&M cookies because again, there's no, no chocolate chips in these. I did send Travis to the store for the M&Ms, the Oreos, and the Reese's. But I, besides that, I was trying to use, use up things we have at home. Oh, and sprinkles. Yeah, we, sprinkles had been long gone. There was not a sprinkle left in the house. At least they make a lot of things these days that taste like raw cookie dough, but aren't really raw cookie dough. I guess we could also talk about that in the comments. Let me know if you like my bow and let me know your thoughts on raw cookie dough. I know the risk. I know the warnings. I like the taste. They do have the cookie dough ice cream, which is much appreciated. And I know they have the cookie dough in the tubs now that you can eat. Let me know if you like it or not. This scoop is broke. Also, I decided with those other two pans to space them out some more, because you know when cookies spread and all that. But on these other pans, I'm going to just flash freeze these, and then I'm going to put them in three different bags for three different parties. And then we will have them already prepped to just bake up right before our party time. And so since I'm not baking these on this pan, I can put them really close together. And these can even, these can even come a little closer. Uh, but anyway, so we're gonna use this scoop that's not broken.
got the really loud fan going in here. Hopefully you can hear me from the wind tunnel, but all of these six million M&M cookies are gonna go in the freezer to flash freeze for us to take a sampling to our different Christmas events. And I'm gonna go ahead and flash freeze this pan to get them in the freezer so we can take at least a sampling of a few of these to each party. Alrighty, so we're getting back to afternoon read aloud time. The kids will not mind that mama baked up two dozen M&M cookies this afternoon and put, I don't know, we'll have to count, however many more dozen in the freezer for upcoming fun. All right, so good evening. <laughs> we are now to the snickerdoodle part of our, uh, of our evening here. We finished up all of the school things and cleaned up. Those of you who homeschool, you know what it feels like at the end of the day. Just got to do a tidy up and went ahead and washed some of these dishes. What do I have in here? I went ahead and got the butter in here to soften a bit. In my bowl here, I have my flour and I've got my cream of tartar and my salt and my baking soda. I did not get tricked into doing this in my little bit bigger bowl because I'm not using the 30 quart bowl for any of these this evening. How can that be? So we've got four and a half cups of sugar. And that's my organic cane sugar because that's what I have. We got three cups of butter. So just spray that honey and love it. You gotta twist, twist it. Okay. So it's like yellow and yellow. Yeah. It's okay. watch another Christmas movie this evening and I do have two more of my freezer meals in the oven so we'll be having that I think we're gonna do corn on the cob tonight as our vegetable we're gonna bun these together then I'm gonna cover the bowl in some plastic wrap we're gonna let it chill for about an hour and then we're gonna go through with our one good working cookie scoop gotta find where I put it then we will do our little round cookie dough balls and from there, I'm gonna flash freeze most of them. You know, poor children, they only got two dozen warm M&M cookies this afternoon. So uh, anyway, I will probably, I guess I'll probably do another two dozen and we'll flash freeze the rest. Again, you know we made those Oreo cookies last night and we're good, we're good. The, the cookies are deep and wide here and we got a lot of holiday jingling and coming up. <laughs> so anyway, It'll, it's good, it's good. We were planning out one of our uh, homeschool group parties. We've got two different groups we're involved in this year. One is having a milk and cookies party, which I'm actually not signed up to bring cookies for. I was gonna bring milk for that, but every family's bringing icing and candy and we're gonna decorate cookies. And then our other longtime group that we've been in, this is my 18th year of homeschooling. So we've been in this group the whole time. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we are yet again doing our graham cracker gingerbread houses this year with them and our families doing the houses. And I know over the years, maybe, I don't know, six or seven years ago, I know I have shown doing those gingerbread graham cracker houses with the royal icing. 
uh, but I thought I'd show those again this year because it's been a while and those are so fun and easy to do. The kids love doing them. And then also, I think it was last year or the year before, a couple years ago, we started also doing the gingerbread houses using Pop-Tarts. I saw that going around on the internet here. And so we mix in those. So we're having another party with just a real small, close group of friends at our house. And for that party, we're gonna do the Pop-Tart houses. So you will be seeing all kinds of fun holiday treats coming together here over these next several weeks. I also plan to, I gotta go look at my calendar, can't tell you when, I know when I'm filming this, that tomorrow afternoon, I know coming up on my cooking agenda, I know I'm having my Mega Mama lasagna day and I do plan to do at least three different types of lasagna. Again, I'll be on the lookout for that video and you'll see, it'll be lots of fun. There's some sugar-free and some Trim Healthy Mama for those ladies looking for those options and some options that would fall into, I'm look, yeah, definitely gluten-free, um, not so much dairy-free, but gluten-free and some other specialty dietary needs. Two of the lasagnas in particular I'm making would check those boxes and that's, that's always nice when those boxes can be checked. But I was also thinking, I would love to have coming up a big THM baking afternoon. And so for those of you who don't know, that's called Trim Healthy Mama, but it's also desserts and baking things that are sugar-free. Some would be considered on the low carb side of life. Some would be keto friendly. Some will be grain free. So I think we will do that coming up as well. scooped out probably when when we take this out I will get the other um, sorry I just want to play with the stone now for a minute I will get the other we got four baking sheets that were flash flash freezing with those cookies and it's been a couple hours now we'll go ahead and get those out and just get those in some bags and uh, lay, quickly label accordingly so those are all prepped and ready to go when we need them and then we will get the snickerdoodles flash freezing. But like I say, don't worry, we'll, we'll do two dozen. That works well because that gives two cookies per person, some people three cookies per person. It's just a nice little thing. And yes, even though they've already had two to three cookies earlier today, they'll be getting some more tonight. <laughs> it is the season, right? Okay, plastic wrap time. I am going to me. Scroll down here. I have this recipe over on largefamilytable.com for no-bake chocolate oatmeal cookies. These are Travis's favorite, and this is such an old recipe over here. I don't think the date shows up, but I think I did this one in like, I don't know, 2014 or so, or 2012, long time. Um, anyway, here is the recipe, and it is, like I said, Travis's favorite. You can also freeze these, and I was like, okay, we need to be making these in bulk uh, so that we have these available. So I'm going to triple this and give my 11 year old the recipe because again, I'm not just making mega, I'm trying to make massive mega here. And so I'm going to triple it, let them know what they need. But the first thing they're going to add buttermilk, sugar, and cocoa powder to a pot. Uh, they're going to stir that, bring it to a boil, remove it from heat. Then they're going to add in the peanut butter and the vanilla, stir that up, and then they add in the oats mix that up and then they drop spoonfuls onto the parchment paper and uh, 30 minutes and they're done, yay. Okay, I, I've just times four the recipe. So I've told him to boil four cups of butter, two cups of milk, 
four cups of sugar. Technically, if it was truly a times four, it would be six cups. But I was like, okay, come on, this is going to be fine. Uh, the cocoa, 12 tablespoons of cocoa powder. After it boils, once it removes it from the heat, it'll be two cups of peanut butter, six teaspoons of vanilla. And then once he stirs that in, then it'll he will add in nine cups of oats. And we don't have quick oats. We have old-fashioned oats, and that works just fine. Okay, you got your four cups of butter, two cups of milk, yes. four cups of sugar. Yes. Okay, now just go ahead and do 12 tablespoons of cocoa powder. And for the vanilla, I'll have him do two tablespoons instead of six teaspoons. Okay, so here are the Liam made special no bakes, and he did half of them in Christmas sprinkles. Liam, this does not look like it's enough for us to actually freeze. But you know what's saving us right now is the fact that we're making a lot. We're making a big variety. So normally this would not be enough to freeze, but the fact that I'm also gonna do two dozen snickerdoodles. Oh, and we're, we're rolling those in cinnamon and sugar, by the way, but we'll do those next. So we'll let these set up for about 30 minutes or so. We'll save a small little, maybe we'll just save 12. I know, I'm getting nice. We'll just save a small bit. Then the rest we will freeze because then we'll have them. Look, we're meal prepping. The best, the best meal prepping. Okay. We did have ears of corn in the freezer, so. Get this going. Nothing to do with cookies, everything to do with dinner. just fine. That'll be the evening cookie after dinner. These are going to all go in the freezer to flash freeze and then these will be our upcoming even more cookie options for upcoming parties. And I'm not even taking into consideration yet like our own family parties like Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So buckle up. <laughs> we'll have all kinds of adventures coming up. So here are our snickerdoodles that are gonna go down in the freezer to freeze. Okay, and then within all that, dinner is done. So we have our taco bake, and then we have our beef and corn bake. And then we have our corn. I've had someone run downstairs to get some more butter for us, and I'm go going to salt and pepper that also. So it's been a bit, and my chocolate no-bakes are not setting up, and I think it's because my kitchen's just really hot with boiling the corn and running the ovens and everything. So I'm just moving them onto, well, this is a parchment paper. I scooched it over. I scooched extra over. I'm crowding them, but I'm going to put them in the refrigerator for about an hour, and I, th I think they, they will then set up just fine. So don't worry. The, the no-bakes will still work out, Travis. And also I wanted to show you, so this was my, you know, inspired, industrious cookie list. Let's talk about what we got done. We got the Oreo cookie balls done. We got the snickerdoodles done. We did the no bakes. We did the M&M cookies. We have not done the peanut butter cut blossoms, the thumbprint cookies, or the master cookie dough recipe, which I just have a lot of variations that you can make from this cookie dough and you make it in bulk. But I'm going to be happy about these four check marks right here. Yes, I am. And it's a, it's a busy Christmas season. Okay, I'm just going to work on 
getting the rest of these onto a pan. Come on, parchment paper, you can do it. It was a nice thought to let them harden on the counter. We did that Thanksgiving. That all worked out, but it's just not working out this season. Good morning. Happy day. I am going this morning to a class with my bonus daughter. It's going to be so fun. But I wanted to get these cookies. So these are the chocolate no-bakes that we put in the refrigerator last night. Even when I came out to the kitchen this morning, I'm like, it's still really warm in here. So I'm glad I did that. They set up just fine. And all I'm going to try to do is just put each layer of parchment paper here in my container. Although this one's kind of divided. Are you going to make the trip? I've been using up. I had some deli paper that I got at the restaurant supply store back at the forest house. It's like little strips of deli paper that go in these little, I'll call it like a hot dog basket. And my friend Ashley Bufa has used that method for years. And her YouTube channel's over at Ashley M. Bufa here on YouTube. But anyway, for her kiddos, and so when I went to the restaurant supply store with her, I got the same little baskets of parchment paper, but that's never turned into a good workflow for me. You know how mom likes to get different systems? But anyway, so I was trying to use up the, the deli paper with some of these. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about, if I, if I was going to freeze these at this moment, I would just pop them into the freezer bags. The snickerdoodles, I've asked one of the kids today while I'm gone to get the snickerdoodles off the trays from the basement freezer and get those labeled in bags, so that'll be done. Since these are our favorite cookie, and none of them got eaten last night, but they are, they are delicioso. I did taste test one this morning. It's hard to go wrong. If you're a chocolate and peanut butter person, it's hard to go wrong with these. They're pretty easy. My 11-year-old made them last night. Anyway, since these are a favorite, and tomorrow we're having more family over, tomorrow we're having family pictures done, our colors this year, we're gonna do red and black. I think those are even fine sitting up on the sides like that. Um, I'm not freezing these yet. I don't think these are going around here. So, we'll just have to, yeah, see these are gonna come in two separate sheets. Okay, you can do it, you can do it. Come on, come on. I feel like I'm talking to one of my cats, come on. <laughs> And this just keep the parchment paper just keeps them from sticking to each other. But this will, the layers help keep it from becoming one big sticky mess. And whenever you go to freeze the cookies, you can put down, like if you have your bag flat, okay, here's our bag. You can do a layer of parchment paper, put all your cookies in, and then you can do another row of parchment paper on top. Um, that way as you defrost, it's the same, the same thought there. Okay, so we have, our nice, busy, Christmassy weekend family bin of cookies. And actually, this evening, I already to told you my itinerary. I'm going to do my lasagna video this afternoon, Lord willing. I've got a Christmas parade this, uh, this evening. And then we have a go to the park, and it's like a candy cane scavenger hunt with flashlights. Okay, so big, big Saturday around here. We did conquer over half of the cookies on my list, so I'm glad about that. All right. So thank you for hanging out with me and cooking up all these cookies over the last few days. Many more adventures await for us, and my right contact is giving me a fit. Come on, contact. Pull it together. It's like, do I change it? Can I make it through the day? I'm not sure. So if I close my right eye, that's why. <laughs> anyway, all of the recipes that we cooked in this video will be linked for you down in the description below. Many of these recipes are over in my easy and frugal make ahead and freeze cookie book guide one that's over at shop.largefamilytable.com. But I'll have the link for you down in the description below. Thank you for hanging out with me and slinging all these cookies. And I'm sure we'll be slinging some more and doing some more in the coming weeks. Like I said, hopefully this afternoon, those little as you keep hearing about and maybe some baked ziti but I don't know if I have ziti noodles we'll use what we have though anywho lots to come thanks for hanging out with me I'll chat with you in those comments below and I'll see you real soon with another brand new video bye bye